are unstoppable. Say we are unstoppable. Say we are unstoppable. Nothing will stop the word of God. Shout hallelujah. The word of God carries power for excellence. The word of God carries power for perfection. Do I have a witness in the house? Praise the Lord. And so no matter what we do, when the word of the Lord comes upon our doings, the word of the Lord brings perfection. The word of the Lord brings perfection. Amen. We are not limited by our ability as Christians. We are not limited by our ability. There is another ability, there is another ability that is at work in us, that is working in us. And that ability is called grace. Shout hallelujah. Say grace. Say grace. It's at work in me. It's at work in me. Say grace is at work in me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our God is good. Our God is good. We've been talking about our vision and God's purpose in the last few weeks. And I'm trusting God today, tomorrow, we will still continue. Sorry, today and next Sunday we will still continue. Praise the Lord. Purpose is important, like I said to you. We read from Luke chapter 1, verse 17. The last verse there, it says, To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Praise the Lord. To do what? To make ready a people. To make ready a people that are prepared for the Lord. And making you ready for the Lord means learning what the Lord desires. It means learning what the Lord really needs, what the Lord really wants out of your life. Last Sunday, we stopped somewhere. We stopped at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, reading from the New Living Translation. Reading from the New Living Translation, it says, This means, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Shout hallelujah. It means that anyone who belongs to Christ, anyone that belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Shout hallelujah. The old life is gone. The new life has begun. Have you noticed people that when they lost their house or when they lost their home or their car, they say that all their work for 15 years, 20 years <laughs> is gone, isn't it? Have you heard that before? Or when they lose something that is precious, something they value extremely, they say, all that they have suffered for, for such a period, they will say it is gone. 
And what the Bible is saying to us that the life of bondage, the life of bondage, when you come to Christ, that life of bondage comes to an end. That life of captivity comes to an end. And the Bible said, a new life, a new life begins. But that new life is powered by the word of God. And so, when you have a new life in Christ, when you have a new life in Christ, and you don't have the word of God in you, you will be weak. You will be vulnerable. You will be incapable of doing things that you should do. Because the new life is powered by the word of God. Shout hallelujah. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. And verse 18 says to us, And all this is a gift from God. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. God brought us to himself through Christ. God brought us to himself through Christ. It's a miracle. Amen. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. God has given us the task of reconciling people to himself. And so, he brought Jesus and Jesus came to show us the way it is done. Because without the example of Jesus, it will be impossible for us to do it. How will you do what you don't know? How will you go to where you have never been before? You need a direction. You need a leadership. And because no man has been with the Father, no man has seen the Father before. And so the only way that God can create his own people, apart from speaking to prophets and speaking to ministers, he said, let me send my son. Let me send my son. My son understands what it takes. My son knows what pleases me. My son knows how to do it. And let me send him. And so Jesus came. Amen. Jesus came to show us the way. Jesus came to show us how it is done. Praise the Lord. And that is why he says, he said, learn of me. He said, learn from me. Understand how this thing is done. He says, by strength shall no man prevail. You can't please God on your own, your own way. You can't. It's not possible. You cannot please God by trying your way, by trying your system. It doesn't work. It is written, by strength shall no man shall no man prevail. It is written. It is written, praise the Lord. It is written, by strength shall no man prevail. It is written, by strength shall no man prevail. And the Bible said that God brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. He said, for God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. No longer counting people's sins against them. Praise the Lord. And I want us to read the last line. And he gave us. Say he gave us. 
this wonderful message of reconciliation and he gave us and he gave us this what wonderful message of reconciliation shout hallelujah and he gave us and he gave us this wonderful ministry of what reconciliation it means that Jesus came. Jesus showed us the way. Amen? Jesus showed us the way. And when Jesus left, he didn't go with the ministry. He left the ministry. Shout hallelujah. Now, it is for reasons like this, that the church needs to get involved in investing in infotech. It is for a reason like this that the church needs to get involved in technology. Amen. Because when we have our systems, there are things that the devil cannot try. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And so the church must grow to that level where we can power an entire network. An entire network. Praise the Lord. You look at somebody like Elon Musk. He has been able to launch his own satellite system. And now he can give internet provision to any nation he wants to. And that's just a man. Amen? He can switch any nation to his system and give you internet. One man. One man. One man. And when you set your mind to prosper so that the gospel can prosper through you, God will remember you. Praise the Lord. You did what I said. When you set your heart to prosper so that so that the kingdom can prosper through you, you can be sure that something will change. Jesus came to show us the way. Jesus came to reconcile us. The Bible said that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Reconciling the world to himself. So when Jesus left, he handed us over the ministry of reconciliation. He said, continue from where I stopped. And Jesus practically said, carry on what I have shown you how to do. And so he said, and he has given us, and he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation, verse 20. So we are Christ's ambassadors. Is that in your Bible? So we are Christ's what? Ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. God is making an appeal through us. He has made us ambassador. An ambassador represents a people, a group. Amen? An ambassador represents something. Shout hallelujah. An ambassador represents country, kingdom, nations, group, and all that. And so, wherever that group is, wherever that nation is, that is what the ambassador represents. 
And so when the Bible says, and we are ambassadors for Christ, we are ambassadors for Christ, it means that we become the spokesperson. We speak for Christ. Amen? We defend Christ. We see to everything that Christ represents. It becomes our, our responsibility to defend the kingdom of God. That's what an ambassador does. An ambassador represents. Amen? An ambassador is a voice of the kingdom, of the nation, of the people, of the group. And the Bible says, and we are ambassadors for Christ. We are ambassadors for Christ. He said, God is making his appeal through us. God is doing what? Making his appeal through us. Meaning that we are a vessel. We are a network carrier. We are transmitters. I want you to get this. Jesus came. He showed us the way. Jesus left and gave us the system to run. He said, now, you have seen the way I did it. You go ahead. You continue where I stopped. Go ahead and reconcile people to God. I will plead through you. I will speak through you. I will touch through you. I will heal through you. I will minister through you. Shout hallelujah. What a noble calling. What a high calling. And unfortunately, this is one ministry that the church has not educated the people of God. And you know what? We pursue things that are irrelevant. We neglect the things that matters. We go after things that Christ has not asked us to do. He said, he has given unto us this wonderful message, this wonderful ministry of reconciliation, that as God was reconciling men through Christ, God also is reconciling men through himself, but now, not through Christ. Not through Christ. Because Christ is God. Amen. Not through Christ, because Christ is God. How is he reconciling people to himself? How? No, no, I don't want to hear us. How? Say me. I am the Christ standing on earth because I represent. I represent Christ. Praise the Lord. When you hear them introduce ambassador, what do they call them? Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome the ambassador of the United States of America. Is that not the way? Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome the ambassador of the United Kingdom. Are you hearing me? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome the ambassador of Nigeria. United States of Nigeria. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If he represents Nigeria, yes. Amen. And so, if you are to be introduced, ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome the ambassador of the kingdom of Jehovah. Praise the Lord. Your name does not matter. Where you are born does not matter. You are introduced after the kingdom where you come from. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. What a noble assignment. What a noble assignment. And every ambassador must be treated with respect and dignity. That's one part. You can't give an ambassador ticket for wrong parking. 
You can only write to the kingdom he represents or the nation he represents. Praise the Lord. You can't sue a policeman on the road no matter what he does to you. You can't sue a policeman. Who do you sue? Who do you sue? Many of you don't even know. The only person you can sue is the IG. He's called the Inspector General. Amen? You cannot sue a custom officer on the road. The only person you can sue is the Controller General of Customs. Why is the devil suing you all over into pieces? No. Why is the devil suing you all over? Paul said to them in Acts of the Apostles, he said, it is, is it lawful to bind a Roman citizen? He asked the commander, he said, is it lawful for you to bind a Roman citizen? And the guy said, are you a Roman citizen? He said, yes. He said, hold on. He went to his boss. He said, ah, this guy is a Roman citizen. Be careful. His boss came to Paul and said, come, did you say you are a Roman citizen? He said, yes, by bet. The man said, but I bought my own. The one that bought and the one that is original, who carries more power? He ordered, immediately, release him, lose him, lose him. The Bible said, immediately, immediately, they released Paul. Why? Because of his citizenship. Is it lawful for Christ's ambassador to be sick? No. I'm asking you, is it lawful for Christ's ambassador to be poor? Even the poorest nation on earth, their ambassador still drives a limousine. They may rent it, but he drives it. Amen. When he shows up, he shows up well dressed. He shows up in suit. Praise the Lord. They, rent, they may rent it, but he shows up in it. I'm talking about the poorest nation. I'm talking about the poorest nation. When their ambassador shows up, it doesn't show that his kingdom is poor or his nation is poor. Why are you disgracing Christ? Why are you disgracing Christ? Do you understand that Jesus said, it is only done to him according to the will of the Father. Everything that Jesus experienced and went through was as it was written of him that it will happen. Amen. An ambassador needs to be trained. An ambassador to, needs to be what? And needs to be what? Groomed. That is the message of God's family church. That's the message of God's apology. That is our vision to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. That is our message. To train you as an ambassador. To train you, to teach you how to conduct yourself as an ambassador. Amen. You don't get it. You don't get it. We tell you the way you talk, change it. We tell you the way you dress, change it. Praise the Lord. Because as an ambassador, you have a code. You have a code of conduct. You have a way of speaking as an ambassador. You don't get it. We understood that. God has called us to train ambassadors. To teach ambassadors. So, even the way you sit is important as an ambassador. Because everything sends a message. People watch your body movement. Are you hearing me? People watch your what? Body movement. 
It's because you have not been educated. You have not been taught. You assume that the way you live is okay. If you are in Christ, automatically you become an ambassador. The way you used to live is in the past tense. The way you are here is matters in the kingdom. Are you hearing me? How you sit, how you walk, suddenly becomes important as an ambassador. What was not important before becomes important because you are an ambassador. You don't get it. Our job in God's family church is to equip you, is to prepare you, is to educate you to function as an ambassador. And everything about you matters. You can be like the world. Did, 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 did you hear what I just said? You cannot be like the world. Let's go to John chapter 15. Praise God. John chapter 15. I want us to read two verses. There. Ah. He says, Jesus said, You did not choose me. <laughs> I'm reading from the NIV version. Jesus said, You did not choose me. <laughs> Amen. So, and, and it's Jesus. Oh, if you ever want to understand, if you ever want to understand the mind of Christ for your life as an ambassador, go and read John chapter 15. Don't read it. Listen. Don't read it from King James. Try and read it from a New Living Translation or try and read it from the NIV. Praise the Lord. Try and read it. If you ever want to understand what ministry is for you as a believer and the consequences of not following ministry, go ahead and read John chapter 15. In fact, before we read John chapter 15, sister, I want us to go to chapter, the, chapter sorry, verse 2. Amen. Uh, let me read from verse 1. From the NIV, Jesus says, verse 1, Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. Shout hallelujah. He says, my true, I am the true vine. He said, but my father is what? The gardener. Who determines the fruitfulness of a vine is the gardener, not the garden. Are you hearing me? It is a gardener that prepares, that treats, that handles, that looks after. And then in verse 2, he says, he cuts off. Hello? He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. He says, the father cuts off every ambassador that does not do his job well. While every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Those that bring forth fruit, he puts through a training process. He puts through a pruning process. And that is where how you talk, how you behave, how you look, that is where it becomes important in the kingdom. Are you hearing me? It becomes important. We say, don't talk like this. We say, don't speak like this. We say, don't dress like this. We say, don't do this. Don't do that. You said, we are controlling you. You said, we are restricting you. Because you are speaking like the world. You are talking the language of the world. But in Romans 8, the Bible calls it the spirit of adoption. You call it restriction. But God calls it adoption. My God. My God, 
And then God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You call it restriction. God calls it, you are being adopted. You are being trained into the new family. If you go outside and adopt a child, if the child is five years old or six years old and you adopt the child, what do you do when the child comes home? What do you do? You begin to teach the child the process of integration in your home. Amen. The child may live a wild life, but with adoption comes control. He may have gotten used to eating with his hand in a hurry, rushing food and doing other because that's, he used to fight for food. And here there's enough. You say, don't fight for food. Eat like a prince. Eat like a gentleman. You say, hey. You say, there is enough. And you restrict him. You call it because you have not been born again. You call it, you call it restriction. Romans 8 calls it spirit of adoption. And you talk like the world. You talk like the world. He says in Romans chapter 8 verse 15. He says the spirit you receive does not make you slaves. NIV. The spirit you received does not make you what? Slaves. So that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about what? Your adoption to sonship. Hey. Hey. I wish, oh God, that everybody will receive this message. And I told you, unlimited freedom is lawlessness. I told you. Whenever you can do what you want, how you want, when you want, you are a lawless entity. You cannot be born of God. You cannot be born of God. You cannot do as you please when you are born again. No, read the scriptures. He says, the spirit you receive does not make you slaves. So that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. He said, the spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are what? God's children. Only adoption qualifies you to be a child of a person. Are you hearing me? Only what? Adoption qualifies you. Paul adopted Timothy. Paul adopted Titus. You don't need to go to court to do that in the kingdom of God. We are spiritual people. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can be adopted in the kingdom at any age. If you accept the spirit of the father that is adopting you. Somebody came to me one time in Munich and said, Pastor, please, I want, I want you to be my father. <laughs> I said, what did you say? He said, I want you to be my father. I said, you do not know what you ask. He said, Pastor, I know, I know, I know. I said, hold on. I went into my office. I got a paper. There was a paper, a, a, a small writing I had then, and I think I should produce it again. What it means to be adopted. What it means to be a son. I had it. And I brought it to him. I said, take this. Read it. Come back to me when you have finished it. It was just one, 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 one flyer front and back. And I said to him, take it, read it. When you have read it, come back to me and let's continue here. I said, God bless you. He said, Pastor, I will come back next week. I said, I'm waiting. I said, I'm waiting. He said, I will come back next week. I said, I'm waiting. Praise the Lord. He never came back. He never came back. I never asked of him. Praise the Lord. You can't be a son to live the way you want. 
And that is what Jesus is telling us. Are you hearing me? You can't be a son that lives the way you want. Every son must strive to be in the bosom of the father. Did you hear what I said? It is the responsibility of a son to press into the bosom of the father. You can't be a, a son that transfers liability only. You say, ah, Papa, I'm owing 10,000. He pays. Ah, Papa, my house rent is due. He pays. Papa, I don't have clothes. He pays. And he said to you, son, come and go to farm. You say, Papa, you still do farm? Ah, Papa, this is modern time. Oh. Farm business is not... <laughs> Papa... He said, son, go and wash my car. I own my clothes. He said, Papa, ah, those things are the job for the house boys. You are not a son. Praise the Lord. And many of us, unfortunately, we don't like restrictions because we are not sons or daughters. Jesus said in Roman, sorry, in John 15, you did not choose me. You did not choose me. But I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. He says, fruits that will last. NIV. I like the way NIV added it. He says, so that you may do what? Go and do what? Bear fruit. And it added in every fruit that what? That lasts. And so that, and so that, whatever you ask in my name, whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. We have read, whatever you ask in my name, you will receive. If you ask anything in my name, you will receive. We have read that. You see, the Bible is like poetry. Sometimes you read some things, but you have to find the missing link in other scriptures. Praise the Lord. Jesus said, the receiving part in my name is connected with your fruitfulness in my name. When you bring fruit that remains, fruit that abide, he says, Whatever you ask in my name, shout hallelujah, you will receive it. He said, I chose you. I appointed you as ambassadors in 2 Corinthians. And so that you will go and reconcile the lost and recover the lost. In my name. He says, when you recover them and they stay, when you recover them and they abide, he said, come to me. Ask whatever you will. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. He said, come unto me. Ask. Because you have represented me well. If ambassador does not represent his nation well, he is quickly demoted and removed. True or false? What do we think that happens in the kingdom of God? We ask you, go and win souls. Go for evangelism. You think pastor is trying to make you work and labor. I am trying to give you a destiny. You don't get it. When you go for soul winning, you are not helping me. You are helping your destiny. I labor for the kingdom in the same way as I'm encouraging you to do. My life is restricted by the love of God. That's the truth. My life is restricted 
Praise the Lord. Oh, yes. You cannot be his son without restriction. You cannot be a child of God without restriction. When you say, Lord, let your will be done, do you mean it? No, when you say, Lord, let your will be done, do you mean it? Do you understand what you are saying? What if getting married is not his will? Would you still love him? Ah, God now. God, God now. Ah, I'm the only child in my family. Ah, ah, God now. God, change your mind though. Ah, ah. God, change your mind. And God said, you are going to be single for me. <laughs> you say, me, I didn't understand it like that too. Me, I didn't understand it too. I didn't understand it. Abraham was married. Isaac was married. Jacob was married. Ha. Moses was married. Ha. Hmm. Hmm. Me too, I must be married. Praise the Lord. You quoted those that you know that got married in the Old Testament. Because of the narrowness of your mind, you left Jesus out. <laughs> Are you hearing me? You left Paul out. <laughs> Amen. You left many of the apostles that were not married out. Ah, why would you call those people? He said, those people don't know what they are doing. Is it not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Did we ever pray the God of James? Praise the Lord. You need to be careful when you handle the things of the spirit. Especially when you are not well informed. Jesus said, I have, you have not chosen me. Jesus is saying, who is the boss here? Are you, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Jesus is saying, who is the boss? He says, you didn't choose me. He says, I chose you. And after I chose you, I appointed you. And after I appointed you, I said to you, now go in my name. Go. Go in my name. I want us to go back to John 15, please. Hallelujah. He said, He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Praise the Lord. It says in verse 4, remain in me as I also remain in you. He said, no branch can bear fruit by itself. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must, it must remain in the vine. He said, neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What is Jesus saying? You can't do anything by yourself when you are a, a new creation or when you have a new life. Your qualification may have gotten you somewhere, but after you are in Christ, it is Christ that gets you to somewhere. Amen. Is there it must remain in the mind. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. He says, I am the vine, verse 5. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I, I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, apart from me, is that in your Bible? Apart from me, what happens? 
apart from me, what happened? You can understand why many people are living in nothing. They are Christians. What you call restriction and you rejected is the spirit of adoption which you rejected. Only in the process of adoption that the spirit of the father enters you and you enter into the father and he says, go in my name. Only in the process of adoption you become like him, he becomes like you. He takes you. He enters into you. Shout hallelujah. For you to be an ambassador, you must believe in the government. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? You can't be against the government and be an ambassador. No. You must be pro-Buhari for Buhari to appoint you as an ambassador. Or in any nation, you must be the pro-government. You notice all the noise that is going on about Tinibu, uh, Muslim, Muslim ticket. Let me put it like that. It is very sad when church enters into politics. We shouldn't be in politics. Church should never be in politics. Amen. We are not politicians. Amen. You know why? We don't speak their language. We don't do things their way. We are, and, and, and some of you, you got politically involved so badly, you forsake the Christ and the gospel. We are not politicians. Whether they have Muslim, Muslim ticket, Fulani, Fulani ticket, Yoruba, Yoruba ticket, Igbo, Igbo ticket, Hausa, Hausa ticket, it's not our problem. You know why? The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. Our job is to go before God and put the heart of whoever is there in the hand of God. You know, you know we have departed from the scriptures. Amen? When people get sick, get sick, and they fly them to India, and they introduce Dr. Bula 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 to them, do they ask if you're a Christian or a, or a, or a, or a Muslim or a Buddhist? Or a, do they ask it? When they fly you anywhere, when they fly them anywhere in the world for treatment, have you ever asked, Are you, if you're not a Christian, don't treat me? No. Do they ask? And Nigeria is sick. Nigeria is very sick. Whoever that have solution, let God bring them. Praise the Lord. Whoever that have the this, do you get it? When the church talks like the world, when the church behaves like the world, we have been polluted and corrupted. Let anybody get there if that is God's will. But our job is to take them in the spirit realm, put their heart in the hand of God and let them use, hey, let God use them and do what he wants to do in our nation. After all, when a Christian president was there, what happened? No, what happened? What happened when Christian... I mean, people don't think. Today, we have Christian vice president. What has happened? No, what has happened? The vice president right now is not only a Christian. He's a pastor. He's a top pastor. What has changed? Do you get it? Do you get it? Jesus was never political. Why should church be political? And then some pastors, from what I read, attended the whatever they were doing in Abuja. And then they said they are fake pastors that attended. Who determines who is real and who is fake? Or is it part of politics now? And now they say that the pastors that are attended, they are not known in Nigeria. 
What if they are known with God? No. Which one is more important? To be known by God or to be known by men? Praise the Lord. Say, Father, I want to be fruitful. I want to be a real ambassador. And I want my fruits to remain. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I want to be fruitful in you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, for your mercies, for your faithfulness, for your love. I will walk in the new life. I will live the new life. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you, Lord. To you be the glory and honor and power. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. God will advance those that advance his kingdom. Are you hearing me? God will advance those. all these things. Do the work of the Lord with all your heart. And you are doing, nobody will force me. Nobody. And you are forcing yourself in life. Your life is full of struggle. You struggle for rent. You struggle for school fees. You struggle to eat. You struggle to raise. You are looking for 20,000. You are struggling to raise it. Borrow me 5,000. They will ask for your debt of birth and your grandmother as a collateral. And meanwhile, somebody else that loves the Lord, serves the Lord, he spoke to the Lord, Lord, I need 20,000. And the Lord said, no problem. He was walking past. Somebody said, come, 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 come. You want to do anything? He said, yes. What do you want to do? He said, this. I said, you know what? Take 25,000. Say, it is still happening. <laughs> Serving the Lord is, is a visa for easy life. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, use me to make an impact in your church as we do it. Lord, whatever is missing in my life, fill it up. Lord, fill it up to the glory of your name. I will do what the Spirit asks me to do. I will be a good ambassador for Jesus. Shout hallelujah. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Let's rise on our feet and lift up our hand and say, Lord, I thank you. And I love you, Lord. You are so good. You are so awesome. In our lives, in this place, Lord, we are thankful. We are grateful. In Jesus' mighty name, I bless you. I bless your expectations. I bless your desires. I bless you are going out and you are coming in. I decree that this week will be a great week for you. This week will be a glorious week for you. May you share a testimony this week. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you share a testimony. And may Jesus be glorified in you. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, so shall it be. 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 In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name.